Now that we're over at the horizontal bandsaw, we can get started. The first step is trimming down the large pieces of stock we get from McMaster car to a more reasonable length that we can use on a mill. For example, this is one of the pieces of stock. We usually get about six foot lengths. We've been using these for demonstration purposes, so they're a little bit shorter. The first step in getting ready for the horizontal bandsaw is scribing out our lines so we know exactly where to cut. Before we scribe out our lines, we want to first take a look at our drawings. We can see here we need two side plates, roughly about two inches long, and we need one base plate at three inches long. Now, due to the curve of the blade or the width of the blade, we need to allow a little bit extra stock on every single cut, and we also want to make sure that we're, we have enough room to mill a, a nice clean face on the edge of our part, because uh, it'll leave a pretty rough, soft finish. So when I'm scribing my lines out, uh, I'm going to be going about an eighth of an inch over, just to give us some kind of wiggle room and tolerance when we're setting up the machine. So to start off with, I'm going to use a combo square, a scribe, and for camera purposes, I'm going to be using a marker, just to make the lines a little bit more obvious. We'll start by setting our combo square to about three and one eighth of an inch. Now it doesn't have to be very precise at this stage because we're going to be getting all that accuracy back when we go over to the mill. We're just using this to kind of roughly mark out our line. So I can see roughly where my line's going to be and I'll just kind of squiggle on a little bit of marker to make our scribe line more obvious. Uh, you can see I was pretty close there but that's okay. Awesome. So right here is our first scribe line. Now we're going to go to five and two eighths right about there. And I can visually see it's so a two inches. It's lining up right on the line. So I need to go one more eighth. Perfect, so we'll go right there. That'll be our second cut. And then we need to go around seven inches. And I can visually check. It's gonna be right around seven and a half. And there's our one eighth inch mark. I'm just going to go ahead and circle that. So now that we got all of our lines all scribed out, we're ready to head over to the machine and get started. So now that we got all of our lines scribed out, we're ready to get started on the machine. We can start by lifting the blade up and getting it ready so we can put the stock on the bed. We'll come over to the left hand side of the machine and pick it up by the handle. Make sure you're always picking it up by the handle and not by any dials or knobs. Uh, you always want to be using this handle right here. I'm going to pick it up a couple inches just to give me some room, kind of wiggle room while I'm working on the machine. Now that the blade is lifted up, we can insert our piece of stock. And then we can go back around and get it snugged up. I'm going to start by moving the movable jaw by hand up against our part. And then coming over here to the right and just tightening it up. And it wants, I want it to be very loose at this stage because we still might need to adjust it. Now using a small ruler or scale, I'm going to line it up with the blade and see kind of exactly where that blade is going to be cutting. Now you don't have to be super precise because we, we gave ourselves about an eighth of an inch or so of wiggle room, but you should get it as close as you can. Once you have it in the right spot that you're happy, happy with, we can go back around and really get it tight. Now you want to get this pretty darn tight. You don't want that uh, piece of metal to, to get lifted up or pulled by the blade, so I always like to snug it down pretty good. Awesome. Once we're set up and ready to go, I think we're ready to get started. We can first start by pulling the e-stop button by twisting it and getting the machine turned on. Now once the machine is on, you should always be aware that the blade will be spinning and you want to keep your hands at least four inches away from any moving part. So always be aware where the blade is never go and grab your part if the blade is spinning. Now we can see we're quite a bit above the part and uh, we could sit here for a while and just wait for it to lower but I like to get it 
a little bit above the part, usually about an eighth of an inch or so before I get started. So using the right hand button, this will lower the machine by hand. And then you can select the speed right up here uh, with the dial. Now I always like to start by checking to make sure it's at zero by making sure the dial is all the way turned clockwise until it hits the stop. Once we're confident that the machine is at zero, I can then, with my left hand, press and hold this button. Once I'm holding the button, I can turn the dial just a little bit counterclockwise and the machine will start lowering down. And I want to get it to be about an eighth of an inch or so above the workpiece. Now that we're right above the workpiece, it's a good time to double check your measurement and make sure you're not going to be cutting the wrong measure, or like that, the wrong line. So I'm just taking my scale once again, making sure I'm a little bit above three inches, which we're looking really good right there. Now we're looking pretty good. I think we're ready to turn on the blade. We'll start by pressing the left hand button and this will turn on the blade, so I'll always be aware. Now that the blade is spinning, we can get the coolant up and running. There's two red knobs in the back here that will kind of uh, meter the flow of coolant to each guy. Now you don't need a lot of coolant, uh, especially for aluminum, but sometimes if you're cutting steel parts, you might need to increase or decrease the amount of coolant. Especially if you have really long parts, sometimes the coolant will flow out and make a huge mess on the ground. Sweet. So we've checked our blade length, we've checked kind of a uh, where we're at a good height above the workpiece and we have our coolant turned on, so I think we're ready to go. Now we can pick the speed with the dial up here. Now, you never want to go really past one, um, so I'm just going to slightly turn the blade, or sorry, turn the dial counterclockwise, and the machine will start lowering into our workpiece. Now, this machine is kind of designed to just cut away uh, and kind of do its own thing. So you don't want to be going too fast. Uh, kind of go based off the feel and the sound of the machine. And uh, just remember, it's a slow machine. You can let it do its thing. And you should always be here kind of observing it and making sure nothing is going wrong. So we can see here that the, the saw is fully cut through our workpiece but it's still spinning. So we don't want to go in and grab the workpiece at this point. We're going to let the blade come to a complete stop and then we can go in and remove our workpiece. Now that the blade has stopped, I'm okay to go grab my workpiece and just using a little wipe all wipe, I'm going to wipe away all the extra coolant. Oh, we get to repeat the process now. I'm going to start by lifting up the blade loosening our jaws on our vise and sliding the workpiece forward. Taking my scale once again, we're going to double check our measurement. We want a little bit over two inches. So that looks pretty good right there. Now I'm going to go around the corner and snug it up. Now the cool thing is, is we've already set our coolant and we've already set our speed. So once we hit the left start button, the machine will start lowering and cutting away. Now if you lifted it up a little bit higher than I did, you might want to repeat that process of going to zero, lowering it slowly until you're about an eighth of an inch above the workpiece, and then getting started. But in this case, we're in a good position, so I'm just going to go ahead and click start. Now while the machine is cutting, you can be over here monitoring it, but I would recommend cleaning up the parts by using a file or a uh, deburring tool, something like that. We're gonna go into a little bit more detail once all of them are cut, but it's just something to keep in mind. You can always be kind of multitasking and doing a couple things while in the shop. So we can see once again, it's fully cut through. I'm not going to grab the part though. I'm going to wait for that blade to come to a complete stop. Now that the blade's come to a stop, I'm going to go grab it and wipe it off just like before. Now I'll repeat the same steps once again and we'll cut our last part. I'm going to lift it up, loosen the jaws, 
slide our part forward. And then using our scale, we're going to double check our measurement. Once we're confident, we can then go over and snug it down. And just like before, we lifted it up to a good height, so I don't need to lower it by hand. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just click the start button. Finally cut through our part. Once again, I'm not going to grab it until the blade comes to a complete stop. Awesome. So now that we got all three of our parts, we're almost ready to go get started on the mill. We have one more last step. Sorry, a couple more steps left to do over here though. We need to deeper the edges and clean up our machine. In this case, it's pretty clean. We didn't really make too much of a mess, but every once in a while, you might spill over coolant or chips might go everywhere, so please just keep the machine cleaner than you found. So, we're almost ready to get started on the mill. Our first step is going to be deburring these parts. We can see the saw left a pretty big burr on the parts, and you wouldn't want to hand these parts to your teammate or a shop manager and get their fingers cut. So, we're just going to use a quick file and uh, quickly deburr all of these edges. Now that our parts are all nice and clean, we're ready to get started. We'll grab our drawing packet, our three pieces of uh, plate, and we'll head over to a Bridgeport mill. <laughs> 